It's January, and I'm having December-type thoughts about my career, which is irritating. But it is I Should Be Writing, Episode 7, Season 18. Well, I should be writing. And hi there. Welcome to I Should Be Writing. This is a podcast for wannabe fiction writers, and I am your host, Mer Lafferty. I've been doing this show since 2005. Ought five, as we who are old in the podcasting world call it. And, um, yeah, it runs live on Twitch now and then later goes into the feed. So we're still doing it, but if you ever want to catch us live on Twitch, it is 3 p.m. usually. Not right now, but 3 p.m. usually, Tuesdays and Thursdays, twitch.tv slash Mighty Mer. And um, as I mentioned before I started the recording, I um, had a bit of an adventure yesterday. It was not a triumphant adventure. Um, it would not have been filmed for any sort of teen movie in the 80s or 90s. It was, it was a... It could have gone into wacky land or fun land or triumphant land, but it was just a waste of time. It was not a waste of time. It could have gone a lot better, is what I'm trying to say. Anyway, I did not write yesterday, yesterday. <laughs> because of the adventure, I ended up, um, yeah, taking care of some stuff, doing some errands, coming home and going back to bed. Today, I did get writing done, and I want to talk about that later on in the podcast because, um... I, 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 <laughs> I'm not sure what happened today. It was weird. I need to talk it through. But we'll get to good news. Um, good news is, really my good news is, the reason why I had to run out and try to rescue somebody yesterday, the fact that I was unable to rescue them, they were still okay. That's the best news I got right now. Um, I still have, yeah, I'm still struggling to set up a better camera, and I'm desk shopping, which is exciting. But um, I, unfortunately, have not seen Star-Eyed Green in the chat, but I did get an email from Star-Eyed Green saying that they got um, three rejections in one day. And y'all, that is a huge... That's just like... That's just a gut punch. And that is hardcore, because... You get those three, and then you keep going because you're pros. You're all pro writers because you keep going after you get that gut punch. And for that, I salute you. I'm going to get you three dings of rejection, team rejection, 13, 12? That's not right. Wasn't it a 10? I thought it was a 10. I hit it three times. I don't know. I don't know. Three is hard, but awesome. Progress. Yes. Uh, Starry Green, I don't see you in the chat. If you're listening to this later on, I really hope you are. We are all cheering for you. We are hitting the yay button. And uh, we... It counted 11 twice. Of course it did. <laughs> oh, I wish Numbers Ninja would get me my new emote soon, because we've, we've got a bot with a dunce cap emote. I'm very excited for. Oh, well. Anyway, uh, remember, guys, if you're getting rejections, it sucks, but there is, you can take an almost satirical look at it and cheer. And sometimes, even if it's only a satirical look, it's like cheering for baseball. Ultimately, it means nothing, but it's fun. And it is fun to go, you know what, I am a pro-ass writer because I run out and... I submit, and they knock me down, and I pick pick myself back up again. Under Pope, got a rejection on the weekend. Congratulations, Under Pope. We are very proud of you. Then you had an anxiety meltdown about your writing career. I totally get that, and I'm very sorry. Um, 
it's rough. We are here for you. We, we like to cheer the rejections, but they're not easy. That's why we cheer for them, because it's not easy. And we're trying to find the little kernel of happiness, which is there. I'm not making this up. But, Underpope, you are awesome. You are the reason I've got the team rejection thing, because I was so impressed with you doing your thing last year. If you're new, Underpope got, uh, did 100 submissions last year. And we were just all very, very cheerful and uh, lots of lots of yay buttons and congratulations because that's that's a good way to get used to this business. I am waiting on one my very first HS Valley. We will be here when you get it. I promise. But yeah, anybody else have any good news? Let me know. I think I'm behind on my email, but I will check that real quick while I wait for the stream to catch up with my request for more good news. I'm just checking real quick. Got that got that fun boilerplate email from Wisdom. You know they want me. You know they want me and my podcast. Or pod, as the kids are saying these days. Pod. I, I, I just... So old. You know, Amazon changed subscribe to follow because they think people are confused when you say subscribe and that implies money is changing hands. So you subscribe to my podcast, that implies I want you to give me money. Even though it's been subscribed since 2004. But whatever. Pretty much what Apple does, we kind of got to follow. Does the money I was owed last November for a delivered manuscript just hit my account today count as good news? Yes, Preemie, of course it does. Congratulations, Preemie. Yay button for you. Um, yes, very, very happy for you. Yeah, I got, I got to notice that um, I had to sign one more thing for a project, but I got to notice that money promised to me in July will get here soon. Well, anybody who has good news, who haven't told me, don't want to tell me, or hearing this later and don't want to email me, I cheer for you anyway. So, um, last year I did the thing where I wanted to trying to focus on my podcasts and my Patreon and figure out how I can improve. And I started setting goals, you know, the, the, all those people with the smart goals and they say, you set the goals and you decide what you're going to do to get your goals. And I made goals and I thought they were reasonable and reachable, whatever the R is supposed to be. And, um, the R in smart. I think it's reachable. Is it reachable? Hell, I don't know. Anyway. And, um, I do this podcast twice a week now where I've never sustained that kind of consistency before. 18 years. Have not done it. Um, realistic. Okay. Well, that's, that's kind of the same thing, really. And, um, I moved to Twitch to give it more life and make it more fun for me. And I understand that some people may not like the me chatting with people in chat format. But um, I feel ridiculous because it, it took me so long to figure this out. I've been trying to figure out, like, how do I, how do I tell how my traffic is? Do I look at one like 30 days of one episode how many it gets because you've got the long tail you know you've got you'll you'll get a whole bunch of downloads the first week and then it just kind of goes but you'll still keep getting downloads so how do you stop counting and decide this is how many listeners i have um but then you know escape artist was doing its numbers and they just counted the downloads for the calendar year and i thought well that's a metric and so I did mine, and I got over half a million, which was cool. 
And then I did the ones for last year. Or, I'm sorry, for 2020. And uh, it was about 100,000 more. So, it's like 500-some thousand for 2021. And 600-some thousand for 2020. Then I went back to 2019. And yes, that also had more downloads than the subsequent two years. <laughs> and on one hand, no, I'm not complaining you know, my diamond shoes are too tight kind of thing. Yes, half a million downloads is amazing. But that number is going down. And I don't know what to do to address it. But are they listening to podcasts less? I, I thought people got more into podcasts because of time. I know we lost the commute. And that's a big podcast learning uh, podcast listening time. I used to um, I used to say that the ideal length of a podcast is whatever your listener's commute is. So you really can't determine it. People will say that your 20-minute podcast is too long if their commute is 10 minutes. And if their commute is two hours, they're going to think that your two-hour babble fest is awesome. In the early days, there was a board gaming podcast where the guys would just talk and talk and talk. And I enjoyed it, but I just got bored. But it was extremely popular for the time because people who loved board games just loved hearing guys talk about board games all the time. And so their two and a half hour podcast was just very popular. Oh, hey, man. I think the Commute Hit Podcast and audiobooks, you do. Okay. Anyway, welcome. Very glad to see you, Paul. Anyway, uh, Patreon support went up. Not as much as I had mathematically hoped for. I was just basically doing, like, a small boost every month. And that didn't hit the goals that I set. But it did go up, so at least Patreon support's not going down. I very much appreciate that. What is this radio you speak of? Yeah, radio uh, advertising, too. And, you know, another thing, and I, I've wondered to talk about this, and I'm frankly torn. On one hand, I abhor Spotify for supporting anti-vaccination, COVID-lie-type talk podcasts. Um, because they're popular. I hate it. And I stopped supporting, I stopped giving money to Spotify. So I, I canceled that account because of that. But the number two podcatcher right now is Spotify. And I'm wondering, it's like, well, Neil Young could take his music off of Spotify. While a big gesture, I'm not sure if he knows... Well, that's kind of like me. <laughs> okay, it's not like me getting off Spotify, but um, I'm pretty sure Taylor Swift would have been a bigger hit. But, um, yeah, part of me is like, if I pulled my show from Spotify's feeds, I don't even know. I I think that the only thing that would hurt was me. It's not going to hurt Spotify. They don't care. I'm definitely not big enough to hurt them. On the other hand, I don't like being seen attached to that teat. So, and then, you know, realizing that I've been doing this for almost two decades and still a small indie podcaster, relatively, also kind of gets me down. A while ago, I mean, like a couple of months, like, I think over the summer, Numbers Ninja was telling me um, that I needed to stop worrying about numbers. Because, no, no, no puns intended for their name. Um, but it's the fact that this is not my job. I, I make nice money. I, I, you know, I'm able to support my show and buy some cool stuff now and then. Um, I don't put down my the Patreon money, or the, the occasional sponsor. But 
it's like this is not this is not livable income and it's nice it's it's nice extra income and my books that's the income that i really need to be worrying about improving and i think part of me thinks i need to not really shift my focus but shift my worry i guess like not worry so much like numbers ninja said over the summer just stop worrying about the numbers but it's very difficult it's very difficult to not want to improve on anything you're doing and unfortunately in this capitalistic society it's it's you know patreon monies and number of eyeballs well divided by 2 usually apologies to my uh, vision impaired audience I mean audience numbers it just feels natural to want more more twitch viewers my ultimate goal if I ever get to be partner is I want to make a stream team of science fiction writers <laughs> that's, that's my huge huge goal here because there are a bunch of us who stream near as I can tell we're all tiny except for N.K. Jenison, and she doesn't really do a show. She starts up Skyrim and chats while she steals cheese. And even if she stole something else, like cabbages, it's not like she has a, a scheduled show and she just kind of likes, she just kind of like, come along with me while I do silly things in Sk Skyrim. But yeah, I'm pretty sure the rest of us are fairly tiny. And so I figured a stream team might be fun, but you have to be a partner to be to, to start a stream team. So that that's my ultimate goal to be partner. And um, it's hard to stop caring about something. It's really hard. I mean, you just you you always want to improve. You want things to im. That that's just the way we're wired. So I'm really not sure how to approach things this year. I want to improve for you guys. I want to bring back more interviews, even though interviews stress me out. I know it, it helps out other authors and it exposes you guys to more opinions than just mine. <laughs> But I, I don't know. I, I, I find it really difficult to think about the future of my projects without caring at all about the Patreon income, the Twitch numbers, the podcast numbers. I I don't know how to do it. And this was going to be a sort of meta thing. Um, the status of Ditch Diggers. Matt and I are going to talk in February. I spoke with him recently. Um, speaking of Matt, I know I talked about this yesterday, but Supervillain's Guide to Being a Fat Kid is out today, and I am so proud of him. I am just so happy for Matt. He wrote the book of his heart, and it is so good. Please, if you've got a middle grade reader in your life, and that includes adults who like fun stories for kids themselves, check it out, please, because, um... I really think it could do a lot of good. I really do. It's a small spoiler. The solution of the book is not lose weight. Yeah. Supervillain's Guide to Being a Fat Kid by Matt Wallace. Oh, I'm going to be talking to Matt tomorrow. And I still have not gotten the details of that. Crap, 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 crap. I got a lot of emails to send. I will let people know on Twitter and on uh, the Patreon, the Discord, about that. We'll be talking tomorrow at 7 Eastern. I'm just not sure where. But if you're available at 7 Eastern, watch my Twitter. I will post when we're live. I'm not going to spoil the book. I think that's, I think that's a good spoiler. I think, you know, knowing that there's no mon montage of... Rocky music and chin ups to win the day is um not a big spoiler. But you you guys wouldn't you guys would expect 
more from Matt than <laughs> all the kid has to do is lose some weight. Everything's better. Anyway, but yes, I have not talked to Matt in in person or on the stream on the live stream in a while. So I'm very excited to be uh, talking to him soon tomorrow about it. We're going to be talking about effects of books, books on kids. We're going to be talking about the word fat. And um, yeah, I'm just really looking forward to it. But uh, yeah, we're going to be discussing Ditch Diggers in February. Ditch Diggers will come back um, if Matt has to step away or can only do like less frequent uh, episode, that's fine. But I'll bring it back. There's, like, new stuff to talk about. There's always new stuff to talk about. Um. So, yeah, my progress on the book is going well. That was the thing I was going to talk about. Crap. <laughs> It's been a week. It's only Tuesday, and it's been a week. Okay. So, I want to tell you how... If you ever wonder if you're a pantser or a plotter, I'm going to tell you what happened to me today. I'm going to try to tell you without spoilers. I think I can. Yeah, I can do that. I can tell you about spoilers without spoilers. So, here's the deal. It's not too much of a spoiler to know that, that my protagonist is on a space, a space station and she's the one of the few humans there. She's thinking about stuff she wants from home. And um, I decided she was making a list. And on the list is like snacks, tampons, other various things that she can't get in the space station because it doesn't really cater to humans. But then I thought, what would I run out of that I would not have prepared for? Probably notebooks. I would run out of notebooks and pens and then wonder like why I can't buy a notebook or a pen. And then I thought, well, why? What do the other aliens do? And then I went on this journey and I did not hit my word count, but it was an awful lot of brainstorming. Because I had to wonder if an alien, these alien, I've made several alien races, if they have the thought of, oh, I should write that down so I don't forget it. If they have that kind of thought, what do they do? And then I thought, okay, I th if this, this alien race um, does this, and this alien race does this, and, and then I came to one of my key plot alien races and what I thought of for them is now key to the plot. It's like, I didn't think about, I, I did not invent this aspect of this alien until today. And in a, I immediately saw how it could be key to the plot and very interesting. I've told you guys that I write a whole bunch of swear words in the margins when I, like, have a breakthrough kind of thing. And yes, there were lots of swear words in the margins when I realized that this one thing, it can be a... It, it, it can be attacked, it can be erased, it can be utterly destroyed and not... And, like, so utterly destroyed, even the concept of it is destroyed and the aliens won't even know it's not there because they won't even know about... I mean, it was like... <laughs> that's what that's what pantsing is like and that is why I will never be a good outliner because I thought what does she want from home and I started with tampons I went from tampons to really key plot point that wasn't there before so if you become a a, a, a pro writer and you are a pantser you will need to learn how to outline unless you want to write all of your books on spec, which means you write them with no promise of contract or money, but you turn in a full book. 
Which, after the past couple of years, I'm thinking might actually sound good. But, overall, that is the way... Oh, I, I can't say all Pantsers minds work that way, but that is the way my mind works. It's like, I will, I will not have any concept of something in my head at all. And I'll start writing and I'll follow these breadcrumbs to suddenly find this huge key thing that wasn't there before and probably would not have come up had I not thought, yeah, she's going to need some tampons. So if, don't, don't feel dismayed if your mind doesn't work that way. Some people just are really orderly in their thinking and do great with just an outline and going from a plot to that. Other people just like to run around in the dark with a flashlight and see what turns up. And uh, when you get to be pro, you have to learn a little bit about outlining, but you've also got to know that you're, uh, you got to trust yourself that if you're running around in your outline and you find something interesting and shiny, that your editor is very likely going to want the better book instead of adhering strictly to the outline and not going any interesting directions. If I'm wrong about this, I'll let you know in a couple of months. <laughs> but uh, that is my that is my concept of pantsers and plotters and why this is why being a pantser is awesome. It's a good feeling. It's like an almost physical feeling of eureka, joy, dopamine hit. And like I said, I did not get my word count because I was trying to come up with these things for all the aliens, but also I was, um, I went down a research rabbit hole and started learning about these glistening, bright, metallic, green and blue wasps that are basically in Mexico and nowhere else. So I've been thinking about them a lot, but um, I'm going to end the official show here now, and then we're going to do some stream raiders, and then we're going to do some chat continuing. If you would like to continue with the chat, you can see us live. If you want to hear the rest of the chat, support at Patreon, patreon.com slash mightymer. Or you can support the, the podcast by telling people, by subscribing on twitch.tv slash mightymer. You can support me at uh, ko-fi, ko-fi.com slash mightymer. And, um... Or you could buy my books. I do science fiction. I do urban fantasy. I do Star Wars. I do middle grade Minecraft. I do it all. That's not really all of it, but it's a lot. So check me out, merverse.com. If you've got any questions about writing, mightymer at gmail.com. And that's me. I will see you on Thursday, I hope, 3 o'clock Eastern Time, because you should be writing. I Should Be Writing is available to you under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives License. Theme music by John Anilio, art by Numbers Ninja, production by Summer Brooks, and hosting by Libsyn. Find all of this information and more at merverse.com. And remember, we can't do this without you. Thanks for your support. Doctor. Yeah, I'm sitting home watching Doctor.